Hi guys, I'm so glad you're here. I'm super excited to get started. Um, first of all, I'd like to see who all is here. Let, um, let me know in the chat box if you can hear me and let me know where you're from and any questions that you have are kind of what brought you to learn about the ketogenic diet. I am so excited to share this with you. And my take on the ketogenic diet is a little different than most mainstream stuff, but I feel like it really resonates with a lot of what people need right now. And is that is that I do keto primarily for mental health benefits. And so that's what I'm going to talk about at first. I, I can see you guys coming in. It's it's nice to see you. Um, glad you're here. Got from Canada, Alaska, um, Florida, even you're up late. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for coming. Um, so first, I want to talk about mental health on keto. And so this is something that I've found a lot of people as I've been researching the ketogenic diet, because I know it works for me. And I kind of wanted to learn more about whether it's just me or if it's something that is actually kind of universally true. And both my daughter and I use keto for the brain health benefits. And kind of in looking in the keto discussion forums and the Facebook groups and like other um, other websites that are devoted to the ketogenic diet, a lot of people, this is like a secondary characteristic of keto, is that they go on it to lose weight. And keto is really effective for losing weight, which we'll talk about in a minute. And we'll actually um, also talk about how you can avoid losing too much weight if you don't want to lose weight on keto, especially for our kids, because we're going to go into how to do keto for kids in this as well. And we obviously want them to grow. We don't want them to lose. Um, anyways, a lot of people will take or start the ketogenic diet because they need to lose weight, like quite a bit of weight, or sometimes they just want to tone up and it's something that is a little bit trendy right now. And so people are doing it. And then it's kind of, they'll go on it and a week later, they're like, I'm so happy. <laughs> and with keto, and we'll talk about this later soon, um, later as well, but with keto, you do get an initial, an initial kind of whoosh where you lose a bunch of water weight. And so seeing if you're trying to lose weight and you see an immediate seven or eight pound loss on the scale, like three days into the ketogenic diet, that is just water weight, but it's also kind of uh, mentally boosting. It's like, oh, well, this is working super well. This is great. Um, and so I think a lot of people at first attribute their better mood and less anxiety and less depression and more energy to that initial weight loss of just having that kind of quick win of losing five, 10 pounds um, for adults. But then as they go on, a lot of people decide, even if I'm at my goal weight, I feel so good on this and I'm off of my anxiety meds. I don't feel depressed in the morning. I'm like excited to start the day that they choose to do keto forever. Um, and this is something that I want to talk about because I feel like it's not really pushed often. There are definitely, I've since I've been doing research, there are addiction treatment facilities that use the ketogenic diet to help people get off not only alcohol, but also like opioids. Um, there are different psychologists that will encourage people to try the ketogenic diet for anxiety, depression, um, post-traumatic stress disorder. And there are actually, let me share my screen with you, tons of studies. And this is what was so exciting to me is I've been told by so many doctors for so long that what your food, what you eat, especially for my daughter, what, what she eats is going to have nothing to do with her brain function. And then like kind of even more sad than that is I will make huge progress with her. Like she lost her autism diagnosis and they're just like, they don't understand it. And so they discount it, which can be so frustrating. And so I've kind of felt belittled by the medical profession for using food to substantially increase our quality of life. So being able to see all of these, let me see if I can get over and share my screen with you. Um, to see all of these studies, you just type in, this is PubMed, and it's, it's, run, it's the .gov, it's by the government. It's not like this is some quack site. These are all peer reviewed medical journals, so ketogenic diet. And then of course, like first we have weight loss and then it goes to cancer, diabetes, epilepsy, which is really where most of us know, or most of the medical profession knows about the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, which is kind of why I think doctors aren't thrilled about me doing it for my kid. Cause in their mind, like, unless she's having a hundred seizures a day, which she doesn't have any, um, I shouldn't be doing the ketogenic diet with her, but you can even do like ketogenic diet anxiety. And a lot of these are gonna be with mice um, and rats, but they're lab rats, like they know, and there's ADD down here. Um, 
they have done tons of studies. And this is something that the medical profession is looking into, which is so exciting. And I'm not sure if you know, but anxiety is something that is one of the biggest health problems actually in the United States is what they say about one in 10 people suffers from anxiety um, to the point where it impacts their quality of life. And this is really what I'm after is to improve everyone's quality of life. And so the ketogenic diet is something that I've even seen people that have gone on keto for a couple of years to lose weight and even coming off of keto, it's like the ketones that we're going to discuss ketones in a little bit because it's kind of the more technical aspect, but the ketones that are produced from running your brain on fat and not running your brain on carbohydrates anymore are what actually can heal your brain. And they don't even really know how this mechanism works. They know it does work though. They know that like there's studies like we just, I just showed you, um, that for the ketogenic diet, when you are on it, they even put, this is all in lab rats, um, but they're studying how it works with traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder, which if you look, I have an article a couple of weeks back about, it's a big long article about how traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder kind of go hand in hand. Um, where people that are subject to trauma, even if it's psychological trauma, have a similar like chemical profile in their brain and how their brain structure changes to people that have had like multiple concussions or like have taken severe falls or been in the military, like active duty and had like definite brain injury and that they can kind of mirror each other. And really what helps one helps a lot of the times will also help the other. So that's something that's super exciting um, that they are doing research in this. But while it's more mainstream to do it for weight loss, ketogenic diet, a lot of us that need mental health help, um, which is also me, um, I tend to not be super open about it. It's not something that you want to really put public on the internet, but I struggle with anxiety, depression, um, which is all kind of symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. We are domestic violence survivors and thankfully we survived. But with that history of pretty severe trauma um, came, my, my brain just doesn't work how it does, which is why I'm so passionate, not only to help myself and include, or to make my family life as healthy as it can be, but also to help other families, which you might not have a history of trauma like that. But sadly, there's so much trauma that goes on in childhood, um, just so much stuff can slip under the radar that can really still affect you as an adult, that that there's something that you can do to help. And for me right now, this is the ketogenic diet. And from what I've talked to with other people with similar things, um, the ketogenic diet is really helpful for, I'd probably say about 80 to 90% of people that have a history of trauma, that you just start feeling good. And if you look in those reports, they're kind of attributing, they're not really sure why this works, but they attribute it to the ketones that are in your brain can not only heal that injury, um, which even if it's psychological, it is a physical injury because the chemical response in your brain has changed and your brain wiring has changed. So it can kind of heal that injury. And also it kind of gives you a, they call it like a mild sense of euphoria, which is common after a concussion or after you leave a traumatic situation is you have that mild sense of euphoria. And then the ketogenic diet just in general is supposed to contribute to that, which is why they're using it in addiction recovery as well, is it, they are showing that people that are on the ketogenic diet can recover from alcohol and like opioid and other hard drug addictions really successfully with this. So anyways, that's my mental health on keto. And I'm going to go ahead and move along. I could probably do a whole webinar just on the mental health aspects. But I just kind of wanted to touch on that first because so many people are struggling, want help. And then when, we're going to go into this in a second. But one of the ways or reasons that keto works so well for the mental health people is because within three days when you're in ketosis, you do get that mild euphoria, as they talk about. Um, and so that just really encourages you to keep going on. You get the energy boost. You just feel good within a couple of days. And so it's not like it's something that you have to like take omega threes, like fish oil is supposed to be good for traumatic brain injury as well. But you, usually you don't see that kind of benefit. It's good to take long term, but it's not something you're going to see those immediate drastic benefits that are so good feeling and kind of help you feel like a normal good person again. So next we're going to talk about what makes you or what is 
the keto diet and how is it different than paleo? What is being in ketosis? How do you get in ketosis? And so you get in ketosis by limiting your carbs. And this is where you have to be pretty strict. And this is a turnoff for a lot of people in the real food movement, because we don't like to count calories. We don't like to count carbs. We don't want to count. We don't want like back when we were hunter gatherers or whatever, there were not nutrient labels on our packaging. And so those of us in the real food movement tend to shy away from any kind of counting or logging or something like that. Put that up for a second. Um, so this is where this is a healing protocol and you do need to count. You do need to like look at the nutrition facts on your food. And if you have a question, you need to look it up and you can't really um, BS yourself. Like you can't, everyone has their own different limit of carbs. And I found that my family were good at like, 35, maybe even up to 50 once we've been fat adapted and we're doing quite a bit of exercise further on. But down when you're first starting the ketogenic diet, you want to keep your carb count below 30 um, and that's 30 grams of carbohydrates a day. And so this is like there's even and those are net carbs. So you get to subtract out the fiber. But this is something that is kind of a turnoff for most people, but you just you see the benefits so quickly. And so that's what makes you be in ketosis is once you have kept your carbohydrate count and most people, their carbohydrate intake is probably 150 to 300 grams of carbohydrates a day. So going down all the way to 30 is like, there's like one gram of carbohydrate in each egg. There's one gram usually in an ounce or two ounces of cheese. Um, there's one net gram of carbs in a lot of green leafy vegetables, like a big bowl of them. And so they can add up pretty quickly. You'll get up to that number fairly quickly, um, even eating food that like you would think has no carbs, like you don't think of it as a carbohydrate rich food. So you have to cut out all fruit. And this is where it differs from paleo. You have to cut out all fruit and all sweeteners other than the like no calorie sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia to be in ketosis. And so to get into ketosis, your body, what it does is it takes First of all, all of the glucose that's already in your bloodstream, and it uses all of that up. And then you have glycogen in your muscles and in your liver. And so it's got to use that up as well. And so for most people, it'll take you, even if you're eating that below 20 or below 30 grams of carbs a day, it'll still take you about three days to get into ketosis for most adults, really active kids. Um, I just did this with my four-year-old for the first time, and it only took him about 24 hours to get in. He's just, he's small, so he obviously doesn't have as much glycogen in his muscles and his liver. They're just small little organs. And um, he's active, super active. Just my kids are all pretty active. And so it can vary. Um, and we'll talk about how adults can get into ketosis and start feeling those mental health benefits if that's something that you're after and kind of desperate for, um, which is totally fine. There's, I suppose there is a neg negative connotation with the word desperate, but I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, but we'll talk about at the end of this video how you can get into ketosis in 24 hours or less. So that's what being in ketosis is, and you have to be pretty strict, um, not quite as strict as they used to think. So they used to think that to be in ketosis, and this is the ketogenic diet has been around for, I want to say about 100 years, probably longer. I'm sure they knew about it before then, but it's been documented in medical literature as a way to control seizures, um, which if you think seizures are a neurological problem, so it makes sense that if something can control seizures, which is like I've been around lots of people with seizures. I used to be a nurse's aide um, and take care of kids that had like, like these kids, hundreds of seizures often. And so that's obviously a very big thing that's happening in your brain. And so if it can, can, can control seizures, um, that it works for mental health, kind of like you can make that leap. It's not a big jump. <laughs> and so anyways, the classic ketogenic diet is the one that they have studied the most. It's in the literature the most. And that one is where you have four grams of pro or four grams of fat to every one gram of either carbohydrate or protein. And they also, they aren't anymore, but they used to be limiting liquids and I think it was just limiting liquids. So that's pretty much a protein restricted diet as well. And so this was, it was causing kidney problems and it was causing growth problems. The kidney problems were coming from the lack of water, the lack of um, liquids that they were allowing these kids to have. And again, this isn't because they did a bunch of like testing different diets to see which one worked to control seizures. They're just like, we know when we do this, these kids or these adults go from having 100 seizures a day to having like one or two, maybe, or completely seizure free um, happens in, I think they're saying about 6% will go from having 
that many to being completely seizure free. Whereas we're, if we look in the literature now, um, people are doing this for less seizures. It's not as severe of epilepsy as that. And they are going seizure free, which is really exciting um, that diet can do this. But anyways, that's called the classic ketogenic diet. And it's the, called the four to one diet. A lot of times I'll refer to it as, and they still will do that diet with kids just because that's what's been studied the most. And so that's what people are familiar with. Even then, like you couldn't just go to most normal neurologists and ask them to support you in putting your child on the classic ketogenic diet. They're just not trained in it. They're trained to prescribe like seizure meds, which are intense um, and definitely people want to avoid. Anyways, there are other ways to get in ketosis and get those ketones. Like to be in ketosis is when your brain is running on ketones, which is a byproduct of fat. So that's how your brain, instead of putting glucose into your brain to run it, um, which I'm in ketosis right now and you can see that I'm my brain's working just fine. Um, and I'm able to exercise, which we'll go on to in a minute. But it's not something that is detrimental. It's just like a different way of processing food to give your body fuel. And so to keep your brain in ketosis, to be in ketosis in a way that is medically going to help you, you need to stay in it every day. So you don't want to kind of go in and out. Like overnight, even people eating the standard American diet or the Western diet um, will dip into ketosis a little bit overnight. But in order to have those really healing benefits that help our brain um, and suppress our appetite for weight loss, which we'll talk about in a minute, this is and give us that good energy and the good mood is something that you want to be in every minute of every day. And so you don't want to knock yourself out of ketosis and then have to go back in. It's something that you want to stay in. So in order to do that, you have to be strict with your stuff. You can't have cheat days. So if you have a cheat day, which is different than a carb challenge, which I'll go into in a little bit, but if you have a cheat day, it's going to keep you out of ketosis and then all of the stuff's gonna come right back. But so being in, Ketosis is strict, but it's not like as strict as that four to one that they used to encourage or say that that's the only, and some people still do this. Some people will say, especially people that are doing it for their children with seizures, they'll say that the only true ketogenic diet is that four to one. And that's up for debate. You can be in ketosis um, and your brain can be running on ketones and not glucose if you're on what's called the modified Atkins diet. And that's pretty much what we're doing um, in my keto family class, which let me put that up so that you can see that. I do have that available right now for you. Um, so in my keto family class, we are running on glucose, but it's not that four to one ratio. If it's that four to one, like they're pretty much giving their kids heavy whipping cream to drink and six of butter to eat. And because the protein is limited, it's not good for growing children. It's not something you'd really want to do unless it's like a super dire thing. Like you are trying to control that many seizures a day. So this is called the modified Atkins diet, which is just keeping your carb count. You'll kind of see, and I go in my keto family class, I go um, to, keto family, here we are. I show you how you can, sorry, I'm looking for the starting thing. Five week starting guide. So there's signs that you can know if you're in ketosis or not. I do, I have, I give you a week to adjust to being low carb. Um, and this is where we're gonna figure out our electrolytes, which I'll talk about later in the webinar. And then for one week, I do want you to weigh and track your food and make sure you are actually in ketosis. Cause sometimes people won't quite get into ketosis and then it's just a very low carb diet. Um, without the benefits, like the energy benefits and feeling good benefits that you get if you're in ketosis. And then once you've been in there and your kids have been in there, you're probably going to be able to tell when you bump yourself back out. Um, and so what comes back, and this is something that makes the ketogenic diet super easy to, um, to stay on, is that it gets rid of carb cravings. So it's like, yes, we are cutting carbs. And yes, if you are carb addicted right now, you might be thinking, I could never do that. Like I have to have rice with every meal. I have to have my fruit. This is like, this sounds like torture. But after those initial three days, once the ketosis takes over your brain, um, you don't have those carb cravings anymore. And then I, we talked about the water weight and we'll talk about this again when we talk about is keto safe for kids. 
but we talked about the water weight. And so that's another way you can tell if you've bumped yourself out of ketosis is when you take in carbs again with every one gram of carb, your body kind of dissolves it in with, I think it's three or four grams of water. And so even if you just take in a little bit, if your body's storing those carbs as glycogen in your liver and your muscles, it's also going to be pulling in a bunch of water with it. So you'll see a sharp increase in your rate, weight. Um, if you go out of ketosis, you're going to see a reduction in energy, which makes it harder to get to kind of have the mental capability to start back in, on keto. Um, and then you'll see a return of symptoms that were controlled when you're for sure in ketosis, which is why we go and do that tracking and see what our kind of carb limit is. So that's how strict, um, this is kind of how you know if you're in ketosis or not. It goes by your feelings. And sorry, right, let's see. Hopefully I got the, all that on for you. Um, and how, so we, yeah, we just talked about how strict chasing ketones. So this is something that a lot of people will, let me just make sure that's not sharing anymore. Sorry. We're good. Okay. Um, so chasing ketones is something that a lot of people, like you have the little urine strips that you can test your urine to see how many ketones you're spilling into your urine. And there's also extra ketones that you can buy like in supplement form for how to, um, to raise your ketone level in your blood. And so the thing about ketones is they're very healing for your brain. They're very good for you. You're going to be making enough. So at first, when you go on keto, your body if you haven't done it before, your body's not used to it and it doesn't know. So it just makes tons and tons of ketones and a lot of them spill into your urine because they're extra. You don't need them to run your muscles. You don't need them to run your brain. Um, and so you're going to show that you're like in heavy ketosis if you look at those urine strips or if you take extra ketones. Um, and really all that means is that you're making more than you need and you're not using them super efficiently. So as you become what's called fat adapted, your body really kind of only makes the ketones that you need. So you can be fat adapted and like literally fast where you're eating nothing. You're just living off your own body fat. So like your intake would be 100 percent fat and your ketone strip isn't going to show as much as if you were eating like 30 grams of carbohydrates when you first started keto. So that's that's what I call chasing ketones. And it's something that people do. It's like you want to get you want to be more, you want to burn more fat. This is a lot of times when people are trying to like break a stall for weight loss um, and you want to burn more fat. And this is not something that I personally recommend. If you want to do it, then that's fine. If you like seeing the little, like getting that instant gratification of the urine strips turning bright purple because there's a lot of ketones in your urine, that's totally fine. Um, it's not bad for you. It's not going to hurt you. And there is some evidence that if you raise the ketones in your blood, you can take a, in a little bit more carbohydrates. Like you can maybe not count your vegetables as carefully, or maybe like go on vacation and eat like what's called keto friendly foods without actually doing that carb count and stay in ketosis. And so that's where taking supplemental ketones can be beneficial. You can also get the same benefit from just eating a bunch of coconut oil. If most of the stuff you cook in and you use extra coconut oil, um, like in the fat bombs that are all over my website, there's quite a few different fat bombs. And you should have gotten an email with an ebook with a bunch of fat bombs in it. Having that coconut oil has medium chain triglycerides, which go right into your bloodstream. And that does raise your... Um, your ability to tolerate a little bit more carbs, but it's definitely not a free for all. You definitely can't do that and then start eating fruit again. That's still going to be too many carbs. It's going to kick you out of ketosis. So chasing ketones, MCT oil is another supplement besides the, I think it's called like exogenous ketones or something. Um, MCT oil is sold by different places and that is it. Coconut oil is about 60% MCT oil and it's buckets cheaper. <laughs> and so I tend to just use coconut oil. I wouldn't say MCT oil is bad. It's a good supplement. And that has been studied. They call it the MCT oil diet that when every meal and every snack, especially if your children, they're trying to con control seizures with um, includes MCT oil. Like they take it in supplement form before or during each meal and snack, they are able to have a little bit higher of a carb count without um, bumping them out of ketosis, which again, it kind of depends on your severity of symptoms. If you're controlling seizures, like having that little extra insurance of taking that MCT oil with every meal and snack is probably worth it. If it's something like you're just getting the extra brain boost, the extra feel good stuff, the extra um, energy from being on keto, then that might not be something that's as important for you. 
it doesn't, I don't think it makes you lose weight faster. Like it might suppress your appetite a little bit more, but it doesn't, it's not like the amount of ketones in your blood directly correlate to weight loss. The reason the ketogenic diet works so well for weight loss is because it mildly suppresses your appetite and it gets rid of those carb cravings. And as we know, it's so easy to overdose on um, refined carbohydrates that getting rid of those carb cravings and having a mild appetite suppressant properties of the ketogenic diet just makes it really easy. And plus we don't have that insulin um, spike and crash. So when you're on keto, it's easy to skip meals, which is something that I actually advocate in my family. Um, Let's go back over here week starting guide. In my keto families class is I advocate, especially for women, if you're trying and men, um, adults only skip meals. But if you're trying to lose weight, it makes it really easy because you don't have that insulin crash. Um, hormonally, it just makes it really easy to just go ahead and skip breakfast. And so that's what I do really just to maintain my weight. I'm not really trying to lose right now. I could lose a few pounds and it'd be still definitely within the range of normal and fine, but um, I'm not actively trying to lose at the moment. And then there's also for people that are trying to build muscles, um, evidence that if you fast, like if you intermittent fast, then your growth hormone goes up. So that can help you to build muscles, which as we know, once you've built the muscles, um, then your metabolism's higher just because muscles take more energy for your body to maintain than fat does or even not having muscles. So once you've built those muscles, that's easier to maintain. So that's all of that about chasing ketones. Um, kind of, we j dipped into the weight loss properties a little bit. And I'll tell you in a minute how to ensure that your children are not losing weight, because we definitely don't want that. Um, how is how keto is easy once you start? And this is um, probably the best part, especially for people that struggle with mental health issues, is that it gets easier. And I call it the progress snowball. I just had a video go up on YouTube talking about this progress snowball. So the reason that keto gets easier once you start is the carb cravings are gone. Like once you are in ketosis, you just don't crave carbs anymore. And part of that's your um, microbiome adjusting. So just like I've talked to my gut healing starter pack, which is the GAPS diet, we keep um, fruit and honey in to that diet but we don't, but your microbiome still has to adjust. And kind of once you've taken it away and you're not taking it in moderation, which moderation, I understand and I like it, but it doesn't help your microbiome. Like when you don't have stuff in moderation, if you're not throwing down like one cupcake every three days, then the, the mic or your microbiome, your gut flora that eats the cupcakes just dies off. And so it's no longer sending those chemicals to your brain like, hey, we really want sugar and chocolate and white flour, but still like psychologically, we know that cupcakes taste good and we know that ice cream tastes good and all of that, but we don't have that kind of overriding chemicals coming from our gut that's saying we really want flour and sugar and um, refined carbs, which most people on a Western diet do have that coming from their gut flora into their brain. And I talk about this in my picky eating solution, which in the email for the webinar replay, you should have gotten, or you should get a link to my picky eating solution. And so if you think this is something you could never do even for three days, then the picky eating solution might be a good place to start. And then from there, you can go on to keto pretty easily. Um, so carb cravings go away, picky eating we just talked about. The more energy, and this is a huge part of why keto is working for me and why it's worth it for me to stay keto, which can kind of be like, I'll admit, it's a little bit socially awkward going over to other people's houses for dinner or going out to eat and just like leaving the mashed potatoes on my plate and eating the stuff that's keto friendly. Um, but the more energy is... It's just crazy how effective it is. <laughs> I have three active children and... Um, I'm home with them. Like I work from home. And so I'm trying to trying to work. I get up early and I work until they get up and then I do kid stuff all day. And then I like do their dinner and put them to bed. And I'm amazed that I still have energy. And this was a big kind of the progress snowball for me of being on keto is I used to force myself to go. I'm a swimmer and um, I swam in high school and 
once my little guy turned three, I started forcing myself to go swim at least once a week again, because I just know how important exercise is for my body and like to promote longevity and for my mood and all of that. I never wanted to. It was like I had to drag myself, force myself to go swimming. And since I've been on keto, like not only do I wake up in a great mood, um, I don't have to, like I wake up without an alarm at four most mornings. And I do my stuff all day long. Like I do have a little slump in the afternoon where um, I'll sit down with the kids and watch like magic school bus. <laughs> but then after dinner, I'm ready to go. And if I miss my workout, I miss it. Like it's something that I'm not like, oh, I'm so glad I got to catch up on sleep instead. It's something that I'm like antsy. And like being antsy after parenting three active children all day, and you guys all know, like I'm sure all of you guys cook from scratch and you have kids that you're taking out to go do activities. And I know what my readers are like, you guys all are very involved parents as well. It's exhausting. And that keto can give me that extra boost that I have, not by sheer forcing myself to do it, but I have the energy to go swim for an hour. I swim with college kids. Like I'm, I'm amazed. Like I swim hard for about an hour twice a week. And then I also go hiking a couple times a week. Um, that's usually with the kids, but just having that energy and not being like, I'd much rather sit on the couch and binge watch Netflix, but saying I would much rather go out and go do these physical activities instead of forcing myself to is kind of why keto is super so much easier once you start and you kind of get that snowball rolling and you have energy to meal prep, you have energy to grocery shop, you have energy to kind of and like clarity of mind, like getting rid of the brain fog is great too, to sort of focus on what you're doing at hand and complete your tasks and get it going. And then the last reason that keto is easy once you start is that keto makes you happy. It just, it has that mild euphoria I was talking about earlier and being happier makes everything easier. So that's, um, that's why keto is easy once you start. Our next thing that we're gonna cover is dairy-free keto. This is like totally jumping, but whatever. Um, you can do keto if you're dairy free. And I know a lot of like, it's because melty cheese and like goopy sour cream just, it looks so appetizing and it is delicious. A lot of the keto stuff and a lot of people I feel like will try keto and it doesn't work for them because maybe they have a mild dairy intolerance. They didn't realize until they're eating like 75% dairy <laughs> for their food. So yes, you definitely can do dairy free keto. And in our, um, in our keto families class, uh, okay. Um, it's okay. So in our keto families class, we are going to do a dairy free meal prep and meal plan. And I will talk about that a little bit more. I do have already, I kind of for each little section, I have different things you want to watch. And so you do, if you are doing dairy free keto, you do want to watch your calcium intake. And I talk about that a little bit more and where you can get it if you're on keto and doing dairy-free. So if you are dairy-free, um, mayonnaise is a great stop sharing. Mayonnaise is a great way to get those healthy fats in and kind of give you that creamy stuff. And in our classes, we always make healthy mayonnaise, which then we turn into salad dressing. So we do dairy-free ranch, or we do dairy-free um, the chili lime mayo slash salad dressing that's up on my site right now as well. And so that helps a lot. Coconut milk, um, full fat coconut milk helps a lot to get your fats in without the carbs. Ghee, if you can do ghee, um, I'll show you in the class how to make ghee. It's just super easy to make and uh, then it just costs the same as butter. You just make it right in the oven and pour off the stuff that you're allergic to. And that's not something I would do if you're anaphylactic allergic to dairy. But if you're not, if it's just a sensitivity, then ghee might be a great way to get those healthy fats in without having to, um, without having all that dairy. So yes, dairy-free keto is good and is great. And then I had someone ask me in our last class, can you do dairy-free and egg free. And I know I get a lot of the people that have a lot of food allergies because all of my gap stuff is so food allergy friendly. Um, I would think it would be hard to eliminate both dairy and eggs. I might try to do an egg free class, but it will probably contain dairy and nuts, but no eggs, just to kind of hit the main food allergies that are in there. Um, and these are just like a meal prep, like an afternoon, a Sunday afternoon for two or three hours. We do a big meal prep where we, and I'll, talk about that a little more in a little bit, um, where we do a bunch of staples for not only this week, but like this week and next week. And so we make like big batches of three or four different recipes. And then we use those throughout the week. 
And then I also provide the nutrition facts so that you can kind of see at a glance if this is going to be enough food for your family based on your like hugely variety, huge variety of nutrition needs. Um, and so that's another thing with keto is how to meal prep smartly. Excuse me. You'll see a lot of the meal prep stuff, and this is why I'm doing the families class specifically. Um, a lot of the meal prep stuff for um, like bodybuilders, and they're all over YouTube, and like they're awesome. Like you know, they're thriving on this because you can see them, and they look amazing. Um, but it's all these individual packages, which is just gonna. I'll do that sometimes. Like if I have to prep food for my kids if I'm leaving them for the weekend with someone, then I'll do that. But um, in general, we aren't going to make three little packages of food for all four, five, six people in our family three times a day. That's just going to like we're going to hate Sundays if that's our meal prep day. So what we do in our keto families class is we make big batches like I have you do in the classic version where we do both dairy and um, we do dairy and nuts in the classic version. And so we make food that's really kid friendly. So we'll make like we actually use a two pound block of mozzarella that's been um, aged. So it's like the more dry mozzarella, not the super soft, fresh mozzarella. And we use that and we make 10, I think it's 10 or 12 servings of fathead pizza. And so for that, we do our individual pizzas on Fridays. We do pizza Friday in our house. Um, that's always a big hit with the kids because they can put their toppings on. And then we also do flatbread out of it. And so you can slice that across and you can make kind of traditional sandwiches. And so when we do that and it's like 12 different servings, then you can calculate out the nutrients, like the carb count and the calorie count for the entire recipe at once. And then even if you want to divide it into 12 units, then you know what each one has. Each one, I can't remember exactly what it is. It's like 333 calories and one or two grams of net carbs in each of those. And so then you don't have to calculate out your stuff every day, but you're also not making like 21 different meals on Sunday afternoon, which is just going to be burnout. Like most of us with kids are never going to be able to get through doing that much prep on a Sunday. And so in the same way for our Taco Tuesday is we make a big batch of four, five, six pounds of shredded chicken that's been seasoned with taco seasoning. And then we have the whole nutrient calculations, which I'm doing for you in the class. Um, we have the nutrient calculations for that whole recipe, and then you can divide it up into what your family particularly needs, and you just know that that many nutrients are in that um, whole batch of chicken or the individual portions because it's easy to divide up once you have the nutrients for the whole recipe. And then, so on Tuesday when we have Taco Tuesday, um, we go ahead and just make those cheese melted tortillas that I, I have those up on my site too. They're called Keto Soft soft tacos or something. And they're super fast. Like I just have to, to reheat in the time that it takes me to reheat that chicken from the fridge that's already been made in the instant pot on our meal prep day. Um, I can pop those, the little cheese tortilla things in the oven. And so I still can get dinner on the table in 15, 20 minutes, but I'm also like, we get the variety of having the meal prep without having to meal prep for like hours and hours on a Sunday. And so that's how our meal prep goes. We make a lot of breakfast sausage. We make a lot of like baked bacon. And then we have the bacon grease that we can use to cook our eggs in and stuff throughout the week. So it's just really, really meal prepping smartly. And then I also tell you what veggies you can prep ahead of time. Like cucumbers don't meal prep, veg or don't meal prep cucumbers. They always get slimy and they get like this gross cucumber slime on everything else in your meal prep. So that's something that I see that a lot of times I'll see like people will show their pictures of keto meal prep on Instagram and they have slices of cucumbers. I'm like, oh, that's not good. It's going to be gross. <laughs> so just meal prepping smartly. Um, and then, like I said, with keto, you get that boost of energy. And if you aren't getting the boost of energy, if you you've tried it and you just felt Bleh, your electrolytes are probably off and we'll cover that in a second. And so the last thing for keto meal prep is if you're the only one that's doing it, let me see if I can get lighting better. There we go. Um, if you're the only one that's doing it in your family, the re recipes that I have are all recipes like the shredded chicken and even the cheese taco things my kids think are like the best thing ever. They're all super nutrient dense. They're all super healthy. They're not like really weird food that your kids are going to refuse. And so even if they're not doing keto, being able to serve family friendly meals that you enjoy, keep you on the diet that you thrive on, um, but aren't so that you have to serve different things to different people. Because even if all you have to do is take it out of the fridge and heat it up, it gets like confusing and it's tiring. And it's um, a lot of times things will end up in the back of the fridge and accidentally going bad. So it's wasting food. So by doing a meal prep for keto that you can do for 
like my boys, I have everyone on keto right now because um, I just wanted to kind of do an experiment and see how they did for four weeks on it. But I'm not going to keep my boys on it. My daughter and I are like severely benefiting from it. But the boys are just fine. So I'm going to go back to letting them have um, like their carbs, like they love apples and different fruit and stuff. And I'll probably make different smoothies for them that do have the frozen bananas in them um, and have my daughter make the ones that don't have them. But other than that, we're all going to be eating from mostly the same stuff. And if they want a side of rice or they want a side of fruit or they want fruit after their meal, then that totally works. But not having to do the two meals is like a total sanity saver. And plus you don't have to worry because these are all meals that are high in omega-3 fatty acids that are so good for children's brain development. And they're so good for keeping inflammation down, which can actually lower blood pressure um, and all sorts of stuff in adults as well. So you don't have to worry that like if you eat keto and you make keto food for you, you have to make something different for them because it's not going to be healthy unless they're on strict keto. This is actually great growing nutrient dense food for everybody. So, and so now we're going to go into, is ketosis safe for kids? Um, and we touched on the classic ketogenic diet, which is the one to four. And I'm going to go over and take you to my kids on keto. Change screen. Maybe. Um. So the classic four to one diet that we talked about earlier, and I kind of told you why I didn't like it, like the limited liquids, limited protein, I don't think is good for kids. But this modified accent Adkins diet, that's didn't want to go there. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to fix this. This modified Atkins diet where you limit carbs is safe for kids. The one thing that's alarming, and this probably has a lot of people um, cautious about it, Almost there. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. Keto kids, there we are. Um, so the thing that is alarming is that initial whoosh of water weight. And this is, it's actually a healthy thing to do. So not only are we using the glycogen that's attached to the three grams of water in our muscles and our liver. So that is water weight that's going to go because we're using up that glycogen. So we're going to get rid of the water weight that's attached to it as well. But also when we have chronic inflammation, and this is like a huge problem in the Western diet is that we have chronic inflammation. It's where a lot of these chronic conditions come from is like even for mental health, they've shown that people with depression have 30% more inflammation in their brain um than people without depression like the inflammation is something that is kind of like weird to think about so like acute inflammation is where like you bash your elbow and it swells up and that's because your body's sending nutrients to your elbow to go fix the damaged tissue like it's sending nutrients to repair it and it's sending increased blood volume to get all the damaged tissue out so that's what your body's supposed to do and that's acute inflammation and that's good for you um, for healing and repairing and that's something that we definitely want to have. But the chronic inflammation is where we're just like chronically a little bit swollen and chronically have a little bit too much. And it's your body kind of like having a chronic illness, whether it's mental or physical, and not really knowing what to do. Like asthma comes from inflammation of the lungs and a lot of like joint pain and joint swelling comes from inflammation of the joints and having that chronic inflammation, that increased blood flow at all times where your body's trying to repair itself, but can't seem to figure out what's wrong is something that a lot of times comes from food allergies. And we're not exactly sure all of the mechanisms of why keto gets rid of chronic inflammation, but it definitely does. Like that's been documented in those studies I was showing you. Um, and you can look on Google Scholar yourself. And so when we get rid of that inflammation, we lose weight as well. And a lot of our kids, like especially our kids with autism will have distended bellies and this is their guts having inflammation a lot of times from eating wheat. Um, that's another difference between my class and other keto classes is some people allow like they'll literally add wheat gluten because it is carb free um, to make bread like products. And I'm definitely all of my classes are no wheat because so many people have that inflammatory response. We're trying to heal heal ourselves, heal our brains. We don't want that inflammatory response of having something that so many people are so allergic to. So anyways, with that inflammation that goes down is you 
you will see weight loss in your kids. And so I weighed my kids um, before we started. And then I weighed them again five days later. And so I have two that are about 80 pounds and they lost just under three pounds. And that's that water weight that I was talking about. And then the inflammation going down. And then my 35 pounder, my four-year-old, he lost about one and a half pounds in the first five days. And the reason I know it's just water weight is because even just that one and a half pounds would have been a 5,000 calorie deficit in five days. And you can see up here, his calorie needs are like right around this. And so there's no way that he was only eating 500 calories 600 calories a day, um, which is what he would have had to be in a deficit of it to lose that much fat. So that's, it's scary, um, especially if you have children on the small side to see them not gaining and to see them losing so much, like one and a half pounds when you're only 35 pounds is actually quite a bit. Um, but it is just water weight. And as soon as he starts eating carbs again, it'll go right back on. And then we have a part in our class about encouraging children to gain weight and which I've never had a problem. I had my daughter and my son, and this was for autism. Um, when we were doing autism recovery, I had them on the ketogenic diet just because I was doing it for her. And I just had us all on it when she was three and he was one. This is as he was um, weaning, he weaned, he weaned about two and a half, three. Um, but I was on keto and she was on keto and he pretty much weaned onto keto. And my second child, he's always been in the 95th percentile. Like he definitely grows. And she's always been like around the 55th, 65th percentile. And she's actually always been a little bit heavy for her height. Like that's been about 10 percentile points above her height. And she continued like the curve is just exact of her weight because I was kind of monitoring her weight um, as we were doing all these different dietary protocols just to see and her weight just it grew just as expected and so this was like a concern that a lot of people have informed me because people love to tell me what I'm doing wrong um, is that my kids won't grow if I don't give them glucose and that has obviously not been true because we did it for over two years as very young children and um, I'm doing it again for her and I'm I'm just really not concerned at all. It's a very nutrient dense diet. And as long as you're like, you're watching their calories and kind of doing a spot check, if you're concerned that they aren't eating enough, then go ahead and count up the calories that they're having that day or go, count up the calories that they've had over a week average and see how they're doing. But adding in the fat bombs, there's lots and lots of like really dense calorie dense foods that you eat on the ketogenic diet. So, and when you get rid of the inflammatory response that so many of these kids have that are having trouble gaining weight, um, their intestines can their gut can absorb more of the nutrients that are in it, in the food that's going through them. And so the food isn't just going right through them anymore. So we talk a bit more about that in the kids portion of the keto family class. But yes, ketosis is safe for kids. And in the last webinar, someone asked me, is ketosis safe for pregnancy? I would say if you're already in ketosis, yes. Um, I would not like induce ketosis, go on keto in the middle of a pregnancy, unless you had like a really specific need and you were being monitored by a doctor because the electrolytes are hard to manage at first. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So, so let's see, modified actin. So, oh, Franken foods. And so this is, we touched on that a little bit when I said I definitely don't use a wheat gluten, even though it's carb free in my classes. Um, there's other, now that keto is really kind of popular for weight loss. There's a lot of bars and protein powders and stuff that you can get that are made of stuff like erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol, and other stuff that's just not really food. It's like weird extractions of food. Um, the only artificial, it's not artificial, the only no cal carbohydrate sweetener that I encourage you to use is monk fruit. Stevia is fine. I like the monk fruit taste a little bit better. Um, and then stevia does have some like, there's some controversy. I need to look into it a little bit better about whether it works for, excuse me, whether it impacts hormones or um, other different levels in the body is there might be some of that. So yeah, avoiding the Franken food. So I wouldn't do keto in the way that a lot of like mainstream is with like Atkins bars and protein shakes and all of that for kids. But if you're feeding them all real food, then I think that keto is just perfectly fine. And my kids have thrived on it. So who needs to track and when? Um, who needs to track their stuff? In our keto family class, I give you, it's like a five week program to kind of get started. And so for the first week, we don't track. We're just getting used to eating low, low carbohydrate foods. Um, we're managing the keto flu, which I'm gonna talk about next. And 
we are getting used to the recipes and we're kind of, it's I call it grace week. It's like, we're getting used to it. And if we mess up, we don't like throw ourselves under a bus, but tracking is kind of tedious. And I do want you to do it the second week. I want you to make sure you're actually in ketosis, that your carbohydrates are low enough. Um, if you absolutely know that you feel like a hundred percent different, you're probably in ketosis and then fine, you don't have to track. But if you are trying to lose weight, I want you to count up your calories and see what your calorie needs are. And I have a link to a really good, um, calorie kind of estimator for so you can see what your needs are that you're using and if you want to lose weight what you need for that um so yeah just kind of getting a good ballpark so you know what like like 200 calories of almonds is just like a tiny tiny amount and i never would have thought that like i was actually when i started keto habitually eating about five to 700 calories worth of macadamia nuts a day. And that's just kind of ridiculous. Like that's not, that's too many nuts. Your body doesn't need that many. So we just do that one week of, of counting, um, tracking. And in that one, after that one week, if you don't want to do it anymore, then that's okay too. But it's kind of, it serves like really eye opening. And I was actually under eating protein is a lot of people like, they feel like you eat too much protein, like four ounces of beef is as much as your palm. And I, I was eating, I was thinking that about two ounces was four ounces. So it was good for me to do as well. Um, so that's when tracking is useful as kind of if you're not happy with your weight, whether you're losing too much or you're not losing enough, um, go, up, go ahead and just track for a week and see how that goes. Um, and then if you're not sure if you're in ketosis or not and tracking your carb count and then lowering your carb count to make sure you are in ketosis is important. So next we're going to talk about keto flu, and I'm trying to wrap this up and trying to keep it about an hour. Um, so keto flu is something that hits people, and this is probably the main reason why people um, abandon the ketogenic diet is because you literally feel like you have the stomach flu if you keep it unchecked. So we talked about the water weight, how you lose all that water weight because your body's using up the, the um, glycogen. And so all the, like, the four molecules of water that have been attached to it go out. Um, your kidneys take them out and you pee. And when you lose that water weight, you're also losing the electrolytes, which is sodium, magnesium, potassium, um, salts are electrolytes. And you are losing those. And let me show you our screen. Change screen. There we go. Okay. Why are we not? When you lose the, that water weight, the electrolytes are attached to it. And it's really easy to become, uh, come on, deficient in electrolytes. And so this is something like I have it marked as mandatory. There are stars on it. It's something that's super important for you to understand. And it's really not that hard. But there's three main ones, pot potassium chloride, magnesium, and sodium chloride, which is sea salt. And sea salt is easy. You just want to salt your food like a little bit more to taste than to taste. Um, especially at first as you're adjusting and losing all that water weight. And soon your body is going to be a lot better at regulating your um, electrolytes, but it's been relying on having some extra ones dissolved from your increased blood volume and that increased water content in your body for so long that when it all kind of whooshes out as you will, signs of electrolyte imbalance are feeling sick, um, having brain fog and feeling tired or lethargic. And I have that in here somewhere. We kind of go into the science of it now. Okay, so here it is. Signs of not enough electrolytes. And then signs of too many electrolytes are water retention. So if you take in too much of the salt, all your body's going to do is pull in more water. You'll probably be really thirsty. So you'll drink water. Um, your body will pull it in, bind it to those electrolytes because it's super important to keep your electrolytes on point because if they aren't, then your heart like your heart needs electrolytes to do those chemical impulses um, and all of the other muscles in your body. So that's why your body is like, it's going to revolt if it doesn't have the right amount of electrolytes until it can figure that out. So that's our electrolyte thing. I will say that of everything, just like I just take half a teaspoon of each of these and I've given you a couple of different options. If you're cramping up, we have a separate section for keto athletes. Um, if you're cramping up during working out, then probably just dissolve some of those salts in some water and make sure you drink that an hour or so before you work out. And we've got, like, I'm still linking to medical journals in here. And so you can get not only people's professional opinions, but also case studies of, like, hundreds of athletes that have been on the ketogenic diet and what they did to be successful. 
So that's our electrolytes. Um, keto flu can also come from just your body not being used to not having the carbs. And this is something that happens when you're on the GAPS diet as well pretty often is that your body is just going to kind of revolt. Like it's not happy about not having carbs. It does not want to switch over in ketosis all the time. Like I said, like most people are in ketosis, unless you're getting up and eating in the middle of the night, if you're going 12 or 14 hours overnight without eating, you're probably in ketosis a little bit. If you've ever lost any weight, you've probably been in ketosis a little bit, but your body is going to like kind of revolt a little bit about switching over. And that's what our grace week is about is sort of slowly switching over. And if you can taper down, which is kind of hard. Like it's, you still have to count if you're tapering down. But what I do is I do all low carb. Um, and then I just, if you start feeling sick to your stomach, like my four-year-old just did this and he's like, I have to poop. I can't poop. <laughs> and I'm just like, you just feel sick. And so I gave him a little bit of tart cherry juice with some raw honey in it. And this is just like a one-time thing. And it's like, you give your body that easy absorbable sugar. Like you can take a few spoonfuls of honey or maple syrup. You want to get about 20, 30, 40 grams of carbohydrates all at once and a really easy to digest form, which is not fruit. The fiber keeps that from being super easy to digest. Um, so juice, applesauce, and like raw honey or maple syrup are all three good ways to get into ketosis. And so you just kind of give your body that. It's like, okay, I have sugar again. And then you'll burn all that off because it's such a little amount. You'll burn, burn all that off in about six hours. And we've always been able to adjust fine after those six hours. So getting your electrolytes right, um, making sure you're having enough salt. And for the kids, like they're not going to take half a teaspoon of salt. So I just oversalt their food. And I use the potassium chloride that I have linked to as well um, on their food, which just tastes like table salt. And they're fine with that. <laughs> And so, yeah, electrolytes. And then just if you do get the keto flu, then you can either choose a lot of people just choose to suffer through it. But I do that immediate, easily absorbed um, 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrates. And if you get the applesauce pouches, you can see on the back of them, there's about 19 to 24 grams of carbohydrates. So two of those uh, maybe rest for an hour. Um, and then you should be good to go. Like your body should have gotten the memo that, hey, we are going low carb for real. And so last, I, before we get to the question and answer period, I wanted to talk about the quickest way for adults to get into ketosis. I just told you that it takes about 24 hours to 72 hours, depending on activity level and depending on how much um, glycogen your body's storing that you have to burn through. The fastest way for adults to do this is a 24-hour fast, um, water fast, or you can have black coffee as well. And some people do a fat fast where they just add like less than 500 calories of um, mostly just fat food, like either fatty meat or like pork rinds or like heavy whipping cream in their coffee. Um, and that's fine too. That'll probably get you in ketosis in 24 to 36 hours, but just doing a fast. And this is something that if you look on Google Scholar, um, again, maybe you're nerdy like me. Um, actually, fasting has been studied a ton and fasting actually does have tons of benefits, which we're not going to go into this in this webinar. I could do like I'm probably not even quite qualified to talk about it, but I could also do a whole webinar. I have fasted for up to three and a half days. Um, I'd like to go longer, but I'm still working on that. And that's actually how I went into ketosis this last time was I was having some mental health. Like it was just getting like unnecessarily bad. And I watched a documentary on Netflix about fasting and I'm like, I'm just going to try fasting. And so I did and I made it three and a half days. And then I started from there eating ketogenic foods and I've been like in a great mental health state ever since. And within 24 hours is when you'll start. I think it was like, yeah, it was definitely the next day is I just from the time I watched that documentary until about 24 hours later. I was still, I called the crazy, <laughs> the crazy was there. Um, and then that 24 hours hit and I was good. Like I was clear headed and thankfully keto is a way that you can get a lot of the benefits of fasting, the mental health benefits without actually fasting, but both fasting and keto will put you into ketosis. So that's the fastest way for getting into ketosis. Um, quick reminder, like disclaimer, children don't fast. And so my children do like a 12, 14 hour fast overnight while they're sleeping. But they do. I never would restrict food from my children for 24 hours. And I never would want you to either unless you were on some sort of like inpatient basis in a hospital. So now we're going to go on to Q&A. Um, kids accepting keto. And this is something you're asking 
um, how do your kids accept keto? We did the GAPS diet when my kids were younger and that was fine. I just put the food in front of them. They could eat, but how, now that they're older and they understand more, how do they accept keto? And this is where the no carb craving really comes in for my kids. I wasn't sure how they do because we have been off of GAPS um, and off of, we still do some, like we eat differently. They know they're not eating the standard American diet, but we haven't been on any specific strict protocol in the past four or five years. And so this was something I was a little nervous about. I was kind of expecting them to go into the cupboard and steal raisins because that's kind of their go-to. Um, if I have my back turned and they would like a treat, they go to get raisins and they're not supposed to be stealing food. Um, but anyways, <laughs> they haven't. And this was something I did explain to them that I was doing this because it makes me think better. It makes me have more energy. It makes me better at sports. So you, and it, it helps clear up a lot of people's skin. It helps balance hormones like PMS type stuff. Um, and then you can go more into the hormones section and the keto family class covers a lot of the women's hormones. And I do have a free video up on YouTube as well that covers more of the hormone aspect. Um, but you can kind of hit whatever appeals to your kids. Like I have, I have one kid that doesn't care. And thankfully she's my one that needs to be on it the most. And she's just like, whatever, I'm like, I would like chips, but you're not going to give me chips. And then my, my little guy, he's four and like I, he listened to me explain it. He knows we're on keto. He can even tell you what foods are keto and what aren't. Um, but, and then my nine-year-old, I did kind of play up the, we're going to see if this can help you um, help your brain and like processing your emotions and help your sports performance and help you have more energy. Like the sports thing, especially for nine, nine-year-old boys is pretty big. And that's another thing you can probably Google and even find athletes that are on the ketogenic diet. And if that's something that your child would be interested in, then that's something that could be really helpful for getting them to transition over. Um, do you need to count calories if you're not trying to lose weight? You don't unless you're just concerned that you're losing too much weight. So sometimes it's good to do a spot check um, and just make sure, especially if you're seeing the scale go down and you don't like that particular trend. So no, you don't have to count calories if you're not trying to lose weight. Um, you do want to count carbs for just a little amount just to make sure. Like I told you just that one week in our in our quick starting guide is for counting carbs. How does the freezer cooking class work with keto? Um, it works really well. And once you've been on keto and you know whether you're in ketosis or not, a lot of the freezer cooking classes are going to be ketogenic friendly, but there's going to be stuff you can't have. Like there's apple chutney in the... Um, Free, what is it? The slow cooker class. There's apple chutney and there's stuffed apples. And in the American classic class, we do blueberry gummies. I'm, I'm working on a gummy recipe, I promise, for keto. Um, I still haven't gotten one I'm super happy with yet. But yeah, there's going to be stuff in every class that's too high a carb. But once you know what's in carbs, and I'm going to try and get the nutrient values for everything in that class, but that's... Um, I'll do that in a little bit, probably this winter after I finish the keto class. So yeah, that's the difference between the freezer cooking class um, and keto. If the freezer cooking class isn't necessarily keto friendly, it's gonna have those higher carb things, but it does complement each other really well. And if you have a lot of food allergies like to dairy and eggs and nuts, the freezer cooking classes aren't, they don't have the dairy, eggs and nuts in them. And I did link to that in the replay webinar um, email that you should be getting. Let's see. Ketone strips. We did cover that a little bit. I don't recommend ketone strips. That's just me. You can do them if you want. They're not going to hurt anything. Um, the only thing with ketone strips that I would want you to, like, I would caution you about is that if you have a cheat meal um, or a carb challenge, which I talk about in the class, and I'll do probably another webinar talking about the carb challenge because um, I'm running a little bit past time that I was aiming for. If you do a carb challenge, your if your body has a bunch of carbs in it after being in ketosis you still have a bunch of ketones in your bloodstream that are circulating circulating to keep your brain and your muscles going um, your body's going to dump those ketones and start using the glucose again for your brain and so they can kind of give you a false positive where people think like oh i'm in super heavy ketosis and i just ate at olive garden last night it's not because olive garden kept you in ketosis it's because your body just dumped those ketones um, so yes, they do show ketones in your urine, but that's really all they are. They show presence of ketones in your urine. They don't say whether your body is in ketosis necessarily or not. Um, for the, 
what order of my classes? So I have a lot because I keep like doing all this stuff with my kids and the stuff that works, I really want to share with you. And I want you to have a much easier time doing it than I am doing it. So if you have a child and you're recovering autism aut from autism, or you have someone that has like major health issues, like especially digestive trouble or sensory issues, um, First of all, I'd get the picky eating solution and that can kind of walk you in three to five days to get onto the GAPS diet and to get rid of picky eating. Because if you have a kid with um, sensory issues or like they're not eating, then the picky eating solution can really help you get them accepting more foods. And doing dietary protocols when your kids will accept more foods is like a million times easy, easier. And really all the picky eating solution does is it follows kind of GAPS principles in a very easy, forgiving, graceful manner for these kids that have sensory issues. And they're not like the typical kids where you can just put something in front of them and say, well, fine, if you don't eat that, you'll starve and they'll eat. These kids with sensory issues literally won't eat. And so that's why I have the picky eating solution is because I like, I have a huge heart for that. My daughter always ate, but I've seen other kids that would just refuse to eat and they were malnourished. Like they will literally refuse to eat till they're passing out and they need to go get IV fluids or IV um, nutrition. And so the picky eating solution kind of starves out the bad bugs that is, are literally telling their brains that the food, like the good food that they need is poison to them. So the picky eating solution is a, it's like a, it's a pretty quick protocol. It's like three to five days to get you on. So your kids are accepting more food. Um, and then you can do the GAPS diet. And so I would do the GAPS diet, which is my gut healing starter pack. Um, and let me go over to... there. So this, I'll put all these over here. So um, the gut healing starter pack intensely heals the gut. And so I'm talking about how ketone and you can do gut healing. My um, GAPS intro part of the gut healing starter pack, which is the more intense version um, that we used for autism recovery. It's very intense. It will give you some of the die off reactions. So you're not going to have like that energy boost that's on keto. And it's just because your body is like majorly in repair mode on the GAPS intro diet. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so yeah, if you have like severe chronic health conditions, like you can tell that your child has tons and tons of constipation or everything they eat is going through them. Or they have like my daughter was stemming and screaming and not sleeping and she definitely needed the GAPS diet. Um, she had an autism diagnosis. So the gut healing starter pack is great for those who have autism, are doing autism recovery, have severe sensory issues, like severe, like crazy life changing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, changing the quality of life, I would definitely clean up their gut first. Because if you have something severe, it's most likely your gut is messed up. And like Hippocrates <laughs> says, all diseases begin in the gut. And so you definitely want to get, if you have lots of food allergies as well, um, you definitely want to get that your gut flora cleaned up, your leaky gut healed up. And the gut healing starter pack is a really good thing for that. And then from there, I would probably do either keto if you found, like my daughter, we did gut healing and we were ever, never really able to introduce um, honey or fruit. And so she just did better on a very low carb version of the GAPS diet. And so from there, if you've done the gut healing starter pack, um, the gut healing protocol for like six months to a year, and you feel like their gut is healed, like they've gotten rid of food allergies, they've gotten rid of most of their chronic conditions, then probably either going to keto if you find that your child does better on the in being in ketosis um, with the, those ketones, or the freezer cooking class can just, um, after the gut healing starter pack, it's a great complement to that. All my freezer cooking class um, either has GAPS options, most of it is GAPS friendly, and it's really food allergy friendly as well. And it just kind of gives you a break from having to cook three meals from scratch every single day, which a lot of these kids that need the GAPS diet um, need to have. And then, so that's kind of my autism rate of what I would do. And it's kind of what I ended up doing for my own family. And then it, but if you're here because of weight loss or you have minor health issues, like you've had, I wouldn't say depression is a minor health issue, but you know, it can go on a scale. It can go like, I'm kind of bummed and I have to wake up. I'd rather be sleeping in every morning and I don't really love life or it can be just like completely detrimental and completely ruining your whole quality of life if it's that bad then i would go 
to um, the gut healing starter pack. But if it's like a minor health issue, and that's kind of what I was feeling like, I'm like, my mental health, health issues aren't like, I'm not about to get my kids taken away from me. They're not that bad, but they're annoying. And it was something I definitely wanted to clear up. I was just done with it. And so if you are looking to lose weight or you have sort of minor mental health issues, um, the keto class is a great place to start. And I, all of my keto foods do complement with the GAPS diet. So if you want to do some gut healing and include a probiotic, then that's definitely a way you can heal your gut while you're on the ketogenic diet. But if you have like severe gut problems, I would definitely start with the gut class as first. So that's, I think that's it for our questions and answers. I'm super glad that you joined me here. Thank you so much. And if you have questions by email, I will try to answer them as fast as I can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just talk about the class again. Um, and it's so it's not done. Actually, sorry, I was going to tell you that before. Um, I'm still working on it. And hopefully by the time you're seeing this video, it is done. I'll update the page when it's done and I'll send out another email. But I'm, I super discounted it. I gave it to you right now. It's for 75% um, off. It is going to be a $150 class. And we are going to have different meal preps, which is kind of this whole thing is centered around families. And even if you're not a family, if you have like super limited time or you kind of like would prefer to have pizza and taco Tuesday over some of the other keto classes, there's other great keto classes out there as well. But most of them are... Um, most of them are geared towards adults and like either a single or a couple and there's there's good recipes they're all delicious like my kids would eat them but they're not necessarily kid food um so like recipes like chicken with coconut sauce with mustard and sage or um coconut sauce with mushrooms and sage are the kinds of recipes that i see and super delicious um super delicious, but more adult friendly. And a lot of times their servings only serve two people. So they're kind of assuming it's one or two adults going on the ketogenic diet. And so that I really saw a need for a family type class. And that's what mine's about. So I'm going to go show you a little bit. And we're going to have, we do the meal prep in a way that we're cooking like a lot of chicken, of a lot of like taco meat, like I already used that as an example. But so then we can do the tacos that that week and then you can also freeze half for the next week and so we just kind of overlap a little bit of our meal prep like we'll do like four or six pounds of breakfast sausage at once and then you have a bunch for your freezer and so we have that grace week that i was talking about let me take you over to the class but the part that I don't have done yet, and I was really hoping to get done, is I have most of the information I've talked about on this class, but I don't have all of the nutrients calculated, and I haven't edited the videos that go with the meal prep for um, for the keto family class. But it's going to have classic meal prep, which includes dairy and nuts, um, and then I'm going to do a dairy-free meal prep. And then I'm going to do a few different kind of based on who signs up for the class and what your guys' specific needs are is I'll do a comfort food meal prep um, that's similar. Like it should just take two to four hours depending on your cooking skill. And then we kind of get used to the same recipes over and over again. And so within those, you're going to be, um, you can change it up. Like if you want to do coconut flour tortillas for your taco Tuesday, one Tuesday, and then taco salad or burrito bowls or something like that. So we're going to use the same kind of basic recipes so that you get good at cooking them because it's total burnout to have to learn to cook a new recipe. And that's kind of in a lot of meal plans. And I think it's because a lot of times we um, we sell these meal plans and we feel like we need to sell you hundreds of recipes every month. And that's just, it's too, it's too hard for you guys to have to learn a new recipe and not get that muscle memory of being able to repeat the same recipes. So we're going to do... Um, we're going to do different meal preps thing like they're based on repeating the similar menu from week to week and then if you want to change it up after two or three weeks then go ahead and just choose a different one um, and we'll do a few different seasonal ones as well but really if you're eating three meals a day that are homemade um, i know that when i'm not menu planning we eat like the same three meals for dinner 
twice a week. <laughs> so these will definitely be plenty of variety, especially with the different options that I'm giving you. And nutrients will be calculated for you, which is what is so important. So, and then we have part of the family, we have different things that we do us. Um, keto is amazing for PCOS. If you have PCOS or you know someone that does, go ahead and search Google Scholar for keto and PCOS, and there's tons of um, studies. But so for each person in the family in specific on keto, I've talked about that because we have a lot of like the bodybuilders and they tend to use a lot of the Franken foods. Um, they talk a lot about men and building muscle on keto. Some of the other bloggers that have keto classes, I'm actually going to link to one, Health for Helpful Pursuit. She does the thyroid thing. So thyroid is something that I don't know about. I've never had a problem with it. Or pretty much fine. Um, I talk about hormones a little bit like related to our monthly cycles, but if you have severe thyroid or let me go back over and just show you. Um, show you Healthful Pursuits class. She's, yeah, she's amazing. And she, I should have linked to her in the email that you got from me as well. So yeah, Healthful Pursuit is great for hormone and thyroid issues. And if you want something that's really only focused on weight loss is Keto 40. And that's what I was talking about where they do the menu plans that only serve two adults. So there's just lots of variety. Um, mine is specifically this, which is why I'm just kind of taking you on a tour here. And I'll put that one back up for you. And so we have, the stuff that is specific for, and especially the kids, um, because I know how hard that can be when you're doing something for your kids and like you kind of feel like no one else has done it before. So that's why I did all of the kids stuff. We talk about like leaky and inflamed gut in here and um, encouraging growth, or I, I'm calling it weight normalization where childhood obesity is a huge problem. Um, and it's something that doctors are pretty concerned about as well. And I definitely don't encourage putting children on diets, but I do encourage obviously the increased energy from keto, the increased like sense of well being can help these kids kind of grow into their weight. And so this is just, this is really my opinion, which is not qualified for medical advice. If you're doing something medically for your child, you definitely want to seek a qualified professional, but this is all of what I would advise um, for the kids. And then we have men. The one thing that I, men do pretty well on keto and they, they lose weight on keto annoyingly fast actually. Um, but you do want to watch your iron if you're a man. And then I talk, so I talk about iron overload a little bit in here as well. And so that's the one thing that I would, um, watch for men on keto. And I've linked to a bunch of journals and then a way that you can, if they have too much iron is donating blood is a great way to, um, lower that iron load, which actually is a problem in men. It can be. And then we, I talk a little bit about specifically men growth, growth hormone. Um, and then we go, have again the special cases, um, side effects like I just talked about, the keto flu. There's also keto breath. And um, what else are we talking about? Keto flu, keto breath. Oh, and keto rash. So that's something that I'll probably do a YouTube video on that soon. I'm not going to go into that right now, but I do have it covered in the class right now for those of you that want to sign up now and get immediate access and see all of that. And we're going to go into more, um, more specifics on how to count. And I'll just show you kind of like with screenshots of my fitness pal or chronometer and um, videos of how to use a food scale. So it's really not as hard as you think. Um, and it's something that you can kind of do as a reset, but not, it's not something that you should need to do all the time. 
and carb challenges we go into as well, which I do this myself is about every four to six weeks is I try eating carbs again. And I just show you how to do this effectively, how to track your symptoms. Um, and then we have some bonuses to help you stay on track, like eating out on keto at restaurants. And this is me, um, like, like I have a section on gas station food just because I am a real person and I understand that occasionally you have to eat out of a gas station because that's all you have available to you. And so if that's something that you're doing for mental health or you're doing it for your child, um, I am understanding and I will help you to keep as many benefits as you can. Definitely don't advocate eating from a gas station, but it's life. And then thankfully, we have lots of pre-made food. Um, that's available for the ketogenic diet, and it can even go with the GAPS diet. And I've tried to note a lot of places whether stuff is not GAPS friendly. So if you're doing the a gut healing protocol along with keto, then this is something that you'll be able to use as well. And as we try different stuff, this is all stuff that I've tried. Um, and we love all this stuff. So as I try more, I'll keep adding. And this is like my Costco list of what I get at Costco. So I'm just trying to make this as easy, kind of like learn everything you can from what I have already done. And then the meal prep with the, that I'm still working on, it's down <laughs> below in my Word document. I was hoping I'd have it done by the webinar, but I didn't quite get there. Um, the meal prep should be up by next week. And when it goes up, the price of this class will go up. So if you want access to all of this to start learning stuff right now, then this is a great time to buy it. The price will be going up soon. Um, I would love to have you. But again, thank you so much for joining me on this. I am super appreciative. I love sharing what I've learned. And I'm really excited that you could want to learn as well. And I'm excited for all the healing that you're going to get from your family. Like I just, I know it's going to be really helpful for you. And I can't wait to hear what you think about it. So thank you for joining me. And I will see you later.